and welcome to another edition of the Invest in GH webinar series. I'm your host, Prince Henry Damkwa. This webinar is proudly sponsored by Bora Capital Advisors Limited. Bora is a fund manager and investment advisory firm that is regulated by the SEC and NPRA. Bora provides excellent financial and investment solutions that are tailored towards the needs of individuals and institutions. You can visit their website on www.boradvices.com for more information. This the Invest in DH web webinar is the seventh in our series. We've had webinars that have covered topics in investments, in mutual funds, stocks, and real estate. All our previous webinars are available for streaming on our YouTube channel, Invest in GH. This webinar is streaming live on our YouTube channel, Invest in GH. So if you're unable to join us here, or you know someone who is unable to join us via Zoom, kindly send the YouTube live link to the person. The link is available in the chat session of the Zoom meeting. Also, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can direct the questions to our speaker here through the chat session or under the comment section on our YouTube live stream. Today's discussion will be centered around the topic, how to start and run an e-commerce business. How to start and run an e-commerce business. And Anaya Alberima, our speaker for today, will join us and take us through the process. We will focus on how to import branded and unbranded products from anywhere in the world to Ghana for sale online. So just sit back and relax as Nana Alberima takes us through the process. Let me introduce our speaker and tell you a little bit about him. Our speaker Nana Alberima is the founder and CEO of Makola.com.gh, an e-commerce site. He is also well experienced in online sales and marketing, having served as former head of technology and head of digital at Renegades Africa Limited. He is also the former head of Pause TV and head of video at Genesis Tech, a partner company of yen.com.gh. Nanayal has certificates in human computer interaction from Georgia Institute of Technology, USA and a tech entrepreneurship certificate from Harvard University, USA. He is also a certified Google marketer. We'll begin our session with a presentation from our speaker and also a demonstration whilst he presents. So kindly be attentive and try to look on your screen as he shares his, um, try to follow him. And then after his presentation, if you have any questions, we will be ready to address them, and then we'll proceed with the rest of the session. So thank you all for joining us today. And we hope we have a very informative and educative session. Please get interactive with us. You can chat with us, and then you can also send your comments as well. OK, so Nanayal, um, thank you for joining us today. If you can hear me kindly, unmute yourself. Hi, Chris, can you hear me? Okay, great, great, all right. So I'll me? leave it to you. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Oh, sweet, thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it to you to proceed from here. And then I'll join in when you are done for the Q&A session. Sure, thank you very much, Prince. Um, kindly um, be vocal a bit because I'm struggling to hear you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you now. It's, it's better. Is it clear? Now. Yeah, it's, it's better. Correct. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Nanayal. Nanayal Berima, as Prince had introduced. Um, today, we're, we're going to basically talk about the business of e commerce, um, what types of e commerce there are, what models of e commerce there are. Um, which one even works best, um, which one you should try. And, you know, basically going through, we're going to go through a checklist of some sort. So um, like Prince was saying, I, I advise that we, you pay attention to when I am presenting. Because So what we are trying to do is be very, very practical with, with uh, you know, it won't be like a, 
a few regular webinar where I just present, present, go through slides, and then, you know, that's the end. Um, I'm going to be very, very practical. So all the things I talk about, I'm actually going to show you, um, you know, what it's about so that you don't have to do it yourself. That way you can focus more on the entire process, on, on the entire session, um, as compared to having to go do things by yourself because you've had it. So you just want to Google it and see and all of that. I'm going to do all of those for you. So um, all you, you would have to do is, you know, basically just pay attention, maybe get a notepad or something, um, write down the pointers, um, and then you can research later after I have gone through the presentation. So I'm quickly going to share my screen. I, I put, so this is basically my presentation. My presentation is a one screen, a one page document. Um, if you're on your phone, I'd say you take a screenshot of this. Because, uh, I mean, this is where the whole presentation is going to be, is going to be centered on. Um, the e-commerce business checklist. Yes, there will be the business side that I'll talk about, but um, specifically because it's an e-commerce um, webinar, this is where, this is the checklist, or this is the list of things that we're going to talk about throughout the webinar. Um, first of all is product. So when you talk about e-commerce, um, there are these three main points that you have to sort of figure out. Wherever I talk, I, I, I like to say that e-commerce really doesn't have a formula to it. There's a system to it, but there is no formula to it. So a system, basically, the system, you know, is, is basically the product you're selling. Where do you get the product? Are you, you know, manufacturing the product yourself? Are you getting the product from a supplier? What is the relationship with you and the supplier? Um, are you allowed to, you know, sell the product in your name? All of those things. And then the order process. Now, the order process is where the different e-commerce models come in. So what model would you run? So in our case, in, because, you know, for the sake of this webinar, the exact model we're going to be talking about is private labeling. Private labeling basically is taking a product that is already done and manufactured by a certain manufacturer, um, taking the contents of the product, and then marketing the product under your own private name. So that is what private labeling is. And it's not, it's not you know, it's not, only for the e-commerce industry. Private labeling is with every industry. So you know, it's, it's actually like a, a known mm -hmm. um, business model. So that is the model we're going to talk about specifically today. Um, now, where would you sell? This is also a big one. People, usually when you talk about e-commerce, everybody is thinking your own website. So creating your own website, putting the product there and selling. But I personally have um, you know, train people or taking people through e-commerce that they didn't have to sell on their own website. They're selling on, on um, marketplaces and people actually have a whole business, you know, people have a whole business centered on the marketplace. They don't have to create their own website. Yes, they, they run the business under their brand, but they don't have to create a website, you know, for their brand. They, they, they use uh, marketplaces. An example, a typical example is Jumia. So if you look at Jumia, there are so many people selling on Jumia. The product you see on Jumia is not for Jumia. You know, it's for different companies that they come on to Jumia to sell um, their products on Jumia. So something like that or a process like that is somebody using marketplace, marketplaces as, um, you know, they are, they are where people can order the products from. Now, the biggest marketplace that I, that I know of, that I have used, that I think I almost every time advice people to use is, okay, it's actually two. So it's Amazon mm -hmm. and Etsy. So mm -hmm. let, me, let me switch to my screen and then I will show you. Um, there. Can we see my screen? You can see my screen, right? Great. So uh, this is Etsy. Etsy is known to be the second biggest marketplace in the world. It comes second to Amazon. Um, Amazon obviously is the biggest e-commerce platform in the world. Now, even on Amazon, they have, they have a system. They have something called fulfilled by Amazon. So it's FBA, it's, Amazon, it's called Amazon FBA. You can Google it. I mean, I'll say you write it down. Let me Google it so we all learn. <laughs> um, so Amazon FBA. So this is, this is basically how the whole presentation is going to go like, you know, I'm going to go through 
whatever I, I talk about with you. So I'll Google it as if I have no idea what it's about. You know, maybe I'm hearing it for the first time. I'll Google it like that, you know, just so we all learn um, from it. So this is Amazon FBA. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's the selling portal for, for Amazon. So if you're mm -hmm. somebody who, who you know, has a product that you have developed or just like we're going to talk about, you have a product that you want to private label and then you sell on Amazon. So you get a product, maybe it's a makeup kit. Um, you, 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 know, you, you source the makeup kit from a certain supplier from a certain country. You have a conversation with the supplier, you get the product, you brand the product, your private, your mm -hmm. own brand. And then you sell it on Amazon as, as um, a private brand. So that's what FBA is for, the, the for free by Amazon is for. Um, so this is just to give us an idea of, of the, um, one second, right. So this is just give us an idea of what the marketplaces are. Now let's go by the checklist that I showed in the beginning. Um, here. So like I said, the very first point is the product. What product are you selling? Um, where do you get the products from? So this is, this is the first point we're going to tackle. So usually people are advised to choose a product, especially with private labeling. So, okay, let me go back and explain what private labeling is. Um, private labeling, like I said before, is basically taking a product or service that has been developed or designed by a company. The company allows for that private labeling model so that other businesses or other companies can come and take the product and sell it under their company's brand. And it's legal, it is completely legal. Again, let's go back to Google and pretend like we don't know what private labeling is. And let's find out what private labeling is. Um, Perfect. Okay, so we are reading this. I don't know if you can see. Okay, so private labeling is an option open to both online and offline retailers. It's where the vendors, the vendor has line manufactured to sell under their name with their own branding. The principal advantage of this line. The principal advantage of this lie in the power it gives retailers, they control production, pricing, and branding. This is basically private labeling. Um, this explanation is you know, typically or specifically tailored to e-commerce, but like I said, private labeling applies to almost every industry, you know, you know um, computer and science and technology and manufacturing everywhere. Private labeling is the same. So again, product, where do you get the product from? Ideally, ideally, you source your products from a manufacturer you can trust. Um, when I, usually when I say this, everybody's mind goes to China. Yes, China is the biggest, um, you know, it's, it's, the place, it's where you can source the largest um, list of, of manufacturers, specifically on Alibaba. Um, but there's, there's a slight learning curve with, with China. You need to be sure of the supplier you're, you're using and how Alibaba itself trusts the supplier, right? So again, this is specifically to today's webinar. However, there are so many other ways you can do it. But today specifically, we're focusing on getting the products from, like, like Prince said, we're focusing on importing the products either under your brand name or under the manufacturer's brand name, bringing it to Ghana, or like I explained, maybe you want to sell on a marketplace. There's also a process to that, we'll get to that. So specifically for the products. Now the product research um, phase is, is where the beginning of your business is. You know, the product research is where you need to do some work. Usually people are advised mm -hmm. to research a product or a product in an industry that you're familiar with. You know, so maybe you are, maybe you're a makeup artist or you have a friend who is a makeup artist or you have done makeup before or something. And so you think that the industry you're familiar with is beauty and, and beauty products and makeup, for instance. 
so for today we're going to use makeup or the beauty industry as as um the case study so i go on alibaba can you guys see my screen yes okay so this is alibaba um, people con actually so people confuse these platforms there is aliexpress which is you, I mean, you can also get get items there or at like manufacturer prices, but it's basically is other Chinese doing what we call drop shipping. So that's also another model. I'll come to that. But specifically, let's get to um, research and So you'd want to go to Alibaba.com and not AliExpress because here you get flexibility with what you can do with the manufacturer, negotiate a certain um, business relationship with the manufacturer. So I. Um, on Alibaba, right? um, I want to look for items that I can sell. Like I said, we're using the beauty industry as, as a case study. So what do I want to sell there? Let's just say I want to sell um, makeup products, right? Remember, I mentioned that we're doing, the model we're, we're testing today is private labeling. And so whenever you're searching, you'd want to add that to your, to your, to your search query. So we're going to search for private label makeup product. And I mean, it'll give you a vast, it'll give you variety of products you can choose from. Yeah. So here it actually confuses people. So you find people spending like six months or five, four months on, on the product research phase because you get so many options, you don't know which one you should trust or you don't even know which one you should go with and, and all of that. But I'll explain or I'll show you um, how you can easily filter through the, the you know, results you get and which ones you should go with and all of that. So when you when you get your result like this, on the left-hand side, this side, you see there are so, there are like different, different, um, you know, filters that you can use. The first one you'd want to go for is trade assurance. So this trade assurance, I mean, what it, what Big Zigali does is, so Alibaba as, as a business, they take the pain to, you know, go through um, the supplier, go through like a, like a verification phase with the suppliers. And so they go through the suppliers, manufacture, um, their, their factories, uh, go and inspect how they operate and all of that. Once they get all of that verified, then they, they issue them a batch, so they issue them a trade assurance batch. That that basically is to tell customers that okay, you can trust this company. So that is the first filter you want to use, the trade assurance. Now there is still a lot of you know other um, filters that you can use. There's like you're still getting a lot of um, results. If I scroll down, you see how many more pages there are to go. A uh, lot of pages. If you know specifically what kind of makeup product you want to use, in my case, I'll uh, Maybe I want to say lipsticks. So I'll filter it again to lipsticks just so I narrow down, you know, the, the um, um, results I'm getting. Now, if you're somebody who is familiar with the beauty industry, obviously I am not. So um, I'm going to choose anything that I think is nice. But if you're somebody that is, that is familiar with whichever industry you choose, or for this webinar sake, the beauty industry, you obviously, especially the women, you obviously know what will sell you know, and what will not sell and all of that. And, you know, that's one of like the key points why you're, you're advised to choose an industry that you're familiar with, because then you can, you know what sells, you know, you understand the industry inside out. It could be a company you work for that, you know, maybe you're an accountant in a certain company that sells something, maybe a certain building material or a kind of building material. And so at least you have an experience with the industry, not directly, but at least you have an experience with the industry. So this is where that experience comes in. You know which product sells and which products don't sell, you know? And even if the product sell, you know how to market it, all of those things. Um, so still on the product research, I mean, the main thing you'd want to do is the trade assurance. However, if after that, you still have a lot of other options that you're confused to which one to choose from, you can then filter to the verified supplier. That is all. That also adds another level of trust that AliExpress has assured you, because they have done. You know, AliExpress by itself has done all these research about this um, supplier or manufacturer, and then they can trust them. You understand? Um, so I am just going to go ahead and choose any one of these. Uh, I'm sorry, but 
you know, obviously I'm a woman, so I don't understand all of these. But if you check this result, for instance, so this is kids vegan. Obviously, we don't want kids. Um, uh, custom lip drop, private labeling, makeup lipstick. Well, okay, okay. Um, let's go with this. Now, this is how I do my research. If I am familiar with an industry, for instance, or if I'm building for a client and I get this product. So you see, there are different price points that they, they mark this product up to. So if you're buying one to nine, uh, if you're buying one to nine cases of it, there's how much it costs. If you're buying 10 to 100 cases of it, there's how much it costs. If you're buying 100 to 1,000, there's how much it costs. If you're buying anything over 1,000, there's also how much it costs. Um, you don't want to start the whole purchase product, oh, sorry, the purchase process through Alibaba. I'll explain what I mean by that. So you see the products here, you get the manufacturer's information here, you like what the manufacturer is selling. To be honest with you, don't pay attention to any of these options. And this is from experience because um, it will confuse you and you can't even keep track when you are scaling the business. You know, when you get to a point where you have to scale the business, you can't keep track of all of these things. So what I advise that you do is once you get the product that the person is selling, and mind you, we have used all these filters all these two filters and so we trust the manufacturer right so once you get that manufacturer and you trust the manufacturer what you want to do is contact the supplier and obviously you need an aliexpress um, account to be able to do this sorry an alibaba account to be able to do this i am going to sign into my account and show you so this is when you, when you go to contact the supplier this is the page that comes you get the supplier information the product that you contact you try to contact the, the supplier from you know is added to the whole conversation and then you can type in your, your, your query or you know whatever you'd want. So again, you remember you're trying to private label this product. So you're going to ask the supplier about packaging. You're going to ask the supplier if they do packaging, that is, if they do packaging, you would want the supplier to do your packaging for you. So please take note of that. If you ask the supplier and they say, yes, they do packaging, the best thing is to let them do the packaging for you so that you will receive your product when it's completely done with your own logo, with your own, you know, everything. Um, so you're going to ask about um, packaging. You're also going to ask about standards because that's also one thing that um, you know some suppliers in China tend to not pay attention to. So the trick is that you intentionally start the conversation as if you are shipping the item to to the US. That way they are they are a bit you know strict and they pay attention to the quality and the standards to an extent. And so that is where you want you want to start a conversation from that you are shipping the items to the US. Um, is it up to standard? All of those things. Um, and then obviously you can negotiate price because, and that is if you're buying in volumes, if you're buying like a thousand or 10,000 or 5,000, you can negotiate price. I think we saw this to be, um, what, $1, I think. Um, yes, $1.20. You can negotiate it to like $1 for each, um, which then will translate like five to the 60 pesos to Ghana. And I'm not a woman, I don't buy lipsticks, but I want to be sure that you can sell this thing for at least 15 CDs. If it is properly branded. So just from there, you realize, you know, you see the potential. You can get, you can get the items at like five cities or six cities, worst case. Um, say you're adding shipping, everything, it comes to seven cities per item. It gets to you, you're selling at 15 cities or even 20 cities. It depends on the branding and how you sell the brand and how you market the brand and all of that. Um, so that is the product research. This is where it's the, the whole conversation starts. And once you're here, um, once you have identified the supplier you want to use, you have contacted the supplier and you're waiting for a response. You can't just wait for the supplier to get back to you before you continue with anything. So once you have gone through the product research, so this is the product research basically. Um, if you go back to the reference document I shared, we have identified what product you want to sell, which in this case is makeup product. Um, where do we get the product? We have just identified that. Um, you know, we have a supplier or a prospect supplier that we're going to use. And, and mind you, if, if you get a response from the supplier and you're not too sure or you're not too satisfied with the response you got, you can always start the process again. You can always go back and research another supplier and do it. In fact, in the beginning, it's advised that you find like two or three suppliers and message them all you know, the same information and see who responds. You get it. Once you get a response from any, any of them and or whoever, whoever responds and you get, you get a response you're expecting, then you can go with them. Um, so that's with the product side. Again, research, find what kind of product you're, you're familiar with the industry, all of those things. Now let's go to the order process. 
if you check the document that I showed. Here. Now we're done with this, right? The product research, where we get product, all of that. Let me try to see another color. Green. Now the order process. This is where people, I think, lose interest. <laughs> and I mean, from where I, I mean, from, I personally understand why people lose interest in, you know, at this stage, because it's, it's very complicated, but it's very simple at the same time. People try to create a brand around their product, which then will mean that they create a whole company around their product. And you know, there's there's a lot of there are lots of moving parts with running a business, running a company. You know, people want to, some people because they think that the item is in their name, they have their own logo on the items, you know, it's it's under their own brand and everything. They, they think they by default think that they need to get a website and immediately start selling on their website, start a whole company around it and all of that. I know people who actually Ghanaians, um, she, she's a banker, as a woman, she's a banker, who sells bags, ladies' bags, under her own brand. And she's making at least like $15,000 every month. And she doesn't even sell the bags in Ghana. She doesn't even have like a website or a company or anything that she sells the bag on. She sells the bag on Amazon and on some of these um, other marketplaces. You know, because you, you believe that customers trust those platforms already. And so buying from those platforms is not difficult for a customer to decide. That's also another thing we'll get, we'll get to when we get to the other process. So the first point you would want to consider when you are planning your order process is customer trust. How do you gain the customer's trust? How do you get a customer to? Because, see, everybody on, this, on Facebook gets an ad of some sort. You know, everybody is shown an ad of some sort. If, but what the action the person takes when they see the ad is where the, the, that's what you want. That's what you want to, you know, those are the metrics you want to be, be, be measuring. And a customer, all of us, I believe, are, we are, we've all been customers before. Nobody sees an ad for the first time, clicks on it and buys. Unless one or two things, unless the item that they are seeing the ad about is something they have been looking for and searching for. And that is where Facebook marketing comes in. The algorithm by itself knows what you have been searching for over time. And so whenever somebody runs an ad that falls in that category, they immediately try to show it to you first before anybody else. And so there is that. Um, so that's the first uh, reason you might immediately click and buy from, from somebody you're seeing an ad from for the first time. The second one is that you know the company or you know the brand. And so you, you trust the brand and you will buy from it. I hope we understand. Um, now, the other process, especially for this webinar sake, uh, uh, that I would like to you know, focus on is private labeling, like we said. But then under private labeling, there are different ways you do private labeling. Um, on the heading of the of the uh, this training, we said that, I mean, the subheading, it said that ordering items from overseas to sell under your own brand, right? I mean, that is one of the ways to do it. That I think that is like the second uh, most popular way to do it. But the first most popular way to do it is sending or you know, outsourcing the whole order process to a third party, a third party that people already trust. In this case, Amazon or Etsy or any of those. Because if, I'm, if I want to buy anything, mm -hmm. I'll first go to Amazon and search for it and try and buy from there. You know, even when you're buying on Amazon, they tell you who is selling it, but people don't really even pay attention to that because immediately they think that it's Amazon. I can trust it, you know. So you would want to take advantage of that. That is where Amazon is the first one that I usually advise everybody to do. Go and sell on Amazon. And I know people might be asking, okay, we're in Ghana. Can we still sell on Amazon? Um, is it allowed? All of that. Yes, it's allowed. Um, there's a whole process to it, but it's very, very simple. And I think because of time, I'll leave that to when the questions come in, because I know somebody will ask. So when somebody asks, then I'll explain and take us through um, the process. Now, that's the very first way I'd, I'd advise that you sell the product when you're doing private labeling. That being said, if you think that you still, because again, people, when they're doing e-commerce, there's a certain mentality that people look at e-commerce or you know, now 20, between 2018 and 2020, people look at e-commerce as a passive income business, you know, something they do just to get some small monies, you know, on some corner or something. But 
people, I know people who are actually e-commerce is like their full-time job. I mean, myself is <laughs> included, um, but there are people who are doing private labeling and it's their full-time job. There's a brand in Nigeria. She's like, the woman is actually Ghanaian. Unfortunately, I can't mention names, but there's a brand in Nigeria that their annual turnover is about $2.7 million. And it's, it's, it's purely private labeling. They are not developing any of their products themselves. You know, so it tells, it gives you the potential and so if you think that you are looking to build a long-term business and not something that you know you just make passive income from, then you would want to consider selling under your own website, your own brand, create a, a small virtual um, business around it. And I'll explain what's virt what I mean by virtual business. Um, so a virtual business basically, now, I mean, in Corona times, everybody understands why you don't have to be in an office to work. You know, so even businesses like Google and there is Google has about 90% of its employees working from home. So, I mean, this, this style of working has always been there since like 2016. It has always been there. Um, it just was under a certain name of um, virtual assistants. So there is, there's, a, there's this um, job title called <laughs> virtual assistant. And I use virtual assistant for all my other e-commerce brands that I run, aside, aside my color, any other one that I run that is 100% is virtual, which means that we don't have an office. Um, yes, we have a setting address registered. Um, we have the business registered in the US. I'll show you how to do that too. How to register a business in the US without ever having to be in the US. I'll show, I'll show you that. So that is what I mean by running it or running a virtual company. So you have the product under your own brand, um, create a website for it. You're selling on your website. You're doing marketing to the website. It's good that you understand that for that model or when you start like that, you won't immediately expect success in like the next two weeks or the next three weeks. But once you get people to start buying from you and now you have established that as a brand, you're going to get those people to buy from you. You're going to get their friends to buy from you because e-commerce, one of the biggest uh, marketing advantages of e-commerce is word of mouth. So you're going to get them to buy from you. You're going to get their friends to buy from you. You're going to get their family to buy from you. And then, you know, if you, if you know digital marketing, marketing to an extent, once you get all of those people buying from you, obviously their data is going into your Facebook pixel and then you can remarket or create a lookalike audience from Facebook and market to them and you're technically going to triple your sales, right? Um, that's a bit technical. I'm sure we'll get there sometime. Um, but that's what I mean by running um, a virtual business. You know, have your own website, sell on there and, and you know, collect the orders from there. Also, you need to understand that once you have, you want to run the business by yourself or you want to um, run under your own brand, under your website, you are going to be responsible for the fulfillment bits, which is why I left fulfillment here as a third point. People think that the other process includes fulfillment. Yes, it does to an extent, that is if you're using a third party, but if you're not using a third party and you're using, or you, you, you want to use sell under your brand, under your own website, you're going to be responsible for fulfillment. And there are different ways of, of you know, fulfilling your orders. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that, but let's just um, finish here. So if you're selling under your own brand, what model are you running? That we have already said, print on demand, right? So you're getting the items from China, you know, being sent to you, whichever way, by air, by somebody you know in China, whatever, get the items to you. And then you sell under your own, um, on, on your own website with maybe influencers or Facebook ads and all of that. Um, and so in this case, you're not going to use marketplaces like Amazon, as I said, or Etsy or any of those. And so that is, I usually don't like to give, to, to make a given statement to say that this is the best way to do it. When I'm, especially when I'm talking about the other process, because like I said, there is no formula to e-commerce. There is a system to e-commerce. You need the product, you need to figure out how people get to order the product, and then you need to figure out how to fulfill the orders. And so what I'm doing is basically giving you an idea of the options you have, you know, so that I'm not specifically saying that use this or use that. Because I mean, in the past, I've had a lot of people come to me to say that, okay, the last time you told us to use this, but I, I realized that using the other one rather worked for me. And, you know, so I like to give you the options and let you figure out, you know, it's a, there's a learning curve to it, but then once you figure it out, you're able to scale up faster and, you know, you make money. You, make, you start making your money easily without having to overspend um, on the business. So 
again, because for the purpose of this webinar, first, we're doing private labeling. Second, we're getting the item so that we sell under our own fund, right? Now, that is why this third point is here. If you're selling under your own brand, there comes the fulfillment point. So with the fulfillment, again, there are different ways of doing your fulfillment. Even if you're selling under your own brand on your own website, you can still use Amazon as your fulfillment center. So there's something called fulfillment centers. So you know, a fulfillment center basically is a place where, for instance, for one of my, my um, e-commerce platforms, it's in the US. But I have a virtual office in Canada. I have a virtual office in Russia. But I'm, I'm here in Ghana. Imagine if I had a product with me in Ghana and I'm selling on my website. Obviously, the website here is worldwide. People can access it from anywhere. People can buy from anywhere, right? But me shipping the item, I'm going to be shipping from Ghana. Imagine how long it would take for my customers to get the items if I'm shipping from Ghana. You get it? And so that is where fulfillment centers come in. Ideally, you should run a virtual business, 100% virtual business. This way, this is what happens. You get the supplier or you get your product from, from the supplier from AliExpress. You sign up to a fulfillment center. So let me show you what a fulfillment center um, business model is like. Um, yeah. So here. Shipbop is the, I say, my favorite fulfillment center. Obviously, there's there's Amazon. There's the fulfilled by Amazon model that I explained. But let me explain what Shipbop, you know, the model Shipbop is. So, I am talking to my supplier from China, like like I, I demonstrated. Um, we finally get to an agreement. I order a certain number of products. Now, because I'm running a hundred percent business, what I do is I create an account here with Shipbop. And Shipboard becomes my fulfillment center. Fulfillment center basically is where the item moves. I mean, literally, a fulfillment center is supposed to be your company, your office, your warehouse, where the items move from, right? But in this case, again, because we are running a virtual business, a 100% virtual business, you sign up to a service like Shipboard. So Shipboard is a fulfillment center that they have, I think, about 60 warehouses in different, different countries. So you sign up with Shipbob, and now the supplier that you spoke to from here, you have finally reached an agreement whatsoever. Um, your products are already branded in your name and everything. You send the item, so the supplier, you give, I mean, once you, you sign up to Shipbob, um, this is my account. Once you sign up to Shipbob, you get an account, you get an address to yourself, you know, sort of like a virtual address, a virtual mailing address to your, to your company. Um, you get all of that to yourself. Okay, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but I can't share uh, the information from my, my platform. So you let's just say it. So Shipbob gives you an address, right? And then you, you get that address, give that address to your supplier. So now the supplier ships the product from China straight to the ship, to, you, to Shipbob. And Shipbob, because you use your address, they know where or who the items are for. And so they put it straight into your sort of like a warehouse space. So think of it like this, a ship bulb, I mean, ship bulb service basically is like you renting a warehouse space, a serviced warehouse space in like 10 different countries so that you don't have to ship the items to you first to Ghana all the way from China to Ghana. And then whenever somebody buys it from the US, from, from Germany, from UK, from Canada, everywhere, then you have to ship it out from Ghana again it will be very, very expensive. So this is where Shipbop comes in. You send your items from the supplier directly to Shipbop. I mean, it's advised that for the first batch, maybe you send maybe two or three samples to yourself, you know, of your products to yourself, so that at least you, you, you're able to check the product, you know, confirm that, okay, this is up to the quality you want and all of that. And then the subsequent bulk batch, you ship it straight to Shipbop. And this is the beauty of Shipbop. Once you get an order, I mean, depending on the platform you're using to collect your order or the website, I mean, the platform you're using, you've integrated your website to, to collect orders. Depending on whichever platform you're using, the order comes in as like a CVV file, like an Excel file. You send it to Shipbob. 
automatically they will fulfill all those orders. They will, they will take the item from, from the warehouse, they put it in a nice package. You know, that is if you have a custom package, they'll put it in a custom package for you. They will seal it, they will ship it to that to the to the customer, they'll provide you tracking information you can give to the customer, all of those things. So this is how people are actually able to run more than one e-commerce businesses. In 2017, 2018, I was running four e-commerce businesses, and this is the only way I could have done it. You know, I mean, yes, some of them were different models. I, I was running a, um, a drop shipping model, I was running a, uh, a private labeling model, and then I was running a print on demand model. And so this is the only way I could have done that. You know, this way I can get all my product under my name, under my brand, my own personal product, ship it to a, a fulfillment center like Shipwalk, and they share it among different options. I mean, you, you choose if you want to share it among different um, countries when you're signing up. That way, they can guarantee you a faster shipping from those countries that you, you select. You know? Because what, what happens is when the customer will supply, when your supplier ships the items to them, then they ship it in bits. So they divide into like maybe five, six different packages and then ship it in bits to the different um, countries, uh, warehouses they have in the countries. Um, so this is the easiest way to do fulfillment. Again, if you go by the advice that you run the business 100% virtually, this is the easiest way to do it. Use ShipBob, ship your items to, I mean, obviously in the beginning, ship a few of it to yourself just to confirm the quality, the packaging and everything. But ship the bulk to ShipBob, which by the way, it's cheaper to ship from China to the US than to ship from, from China to Ghana. So imagine, you're going to have to have the supplier ship from China all the way to you in Ghana, very, very expensive. And then you're shipping again to, to, to customers in other countries, also expensive, you know. So that is the fulfillment bit. So this typically, or everything I'm speaking about typically explains the entire e-commerce system. Like I said, there really isn't a, a formula to it. There's just a system to it. So this is basically the system you need to understand with e-commerce, specifically to the model, the private labeling model, you know, which is buying items from China under your own name and then selling to customers that you know need the items. Um, there's more to it. There's obviously a lot more um, technicalities to it, but you know, as you know, we only have about an hour for this entire webinar. And so I, I, I just had to go through a checklist as I had written it and then explain to you, you know, what, what these, all of these lists entails and then which one you should pay attention to and which, which one I would recommend um, like I have done. And so I would leave it here for this checklist. Um, the next things I'm going to be doing are points you should write down and research on them. So I'm just going to go through those uh, you know, very, very fast. Just write them down and research on them. The first one would be um, how to register a business in the US without having to be in the US. Um, this is the question I get asked like almost everywhere I mentioned, everybody's like, wait, what? How is that even legal? And it's very legal and it's very possible. This is how you, you um, register a business in the US without having to be in the US. I am going to, again, Google it as if I don't know what I'm talking about, just so we can all learn from it. So you go to Delaware Inc. And this is a very, this is a legal business. So I think, I don't know what the situation is, but all I know is the state of Delaware in the US um, have allowed, or they have, a, they have a, a regulation that allows foreigners to register a business in the US in that particular state. And you get all your legal documents shipped hard copies and soft copies shipped to you, 100% legal. This guarantees you um, a bank account in the US. It guarantees you, you know, a lawyer in the US. You can, you can you know, order all of those services from, from, um, from the, the website. Yeah, actually, let me put the website. Delaware Inc. I think. Um, yeah, they give you all of those, those breaks. So this is where it is. And this is actually how much it costs. For about roughly $180, you get a registered business in the US. Obviously it's an LLC. You can actually choose between an LLC or choose you know, other um, forms you want to register the business in. Here you can order a lawyer for your business, all of those things and they help you. Um, 
The second one would be, because when I talk about private labeling and getting the product and having them under your own brand and everything, the first question I get is packaging. You know, how do I get my packaging? Who does it for me and all of that? For me personally, as um, Prince read my, in my bio, I have had experience with different industries. So I know how to do almost everything. So I do my packaging myself. I do my branding myself. I build my websites myself. I build, I do my marketing myself. I do everything myself. So for me, it doesn't apply to me, but I've had people who have, you know, asked me these things and immediately I refer them to Fiverr. So where you can get all your logos done for you, that's if you don't have a friend in Ghana who can do it for you. You can actually get logos done for you on Fiverr for like, um, what? I don't know, $5 maybe, $10, $20, you know, depending on your budget, you can have anything that for you. So this is Fiverr, right? Anything you need. And so this goes to, because most of the times you have people who say they are very interested in the model, they like the idea of doing this kind of business, but they don't have the experience to do this kind of business. And so I refer them to Fiverr. Here you can hire people to do almost everything for you. You know, if you're not a data marketing person, you can get somebody here to do your data marketing for you. You don't know how to do design you can get somebody here to do your design for you do your if it's a, if you think that in the future you have money you want to turn it into an actual 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 business for you know a long term you'd want to get a website sorry you don't get a mobile app or something there's somebody here to do it for you you're doing packaging you know the packaging you give to your suppliers to, to put on your on your product all of those things you can get it here but this is also um the second most important thing here you can get everything you need here um I think that will be it. My time is, is far spent. So I'll leave it here. And I think, you know, during the questions, a lot of other things will come up and then I'll just add it to it. So thank you very much for staying through my very, very long talk. Um, Prince, I'll, I'll yeah. leave it to you um, to continue. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much, Nanael. I, I don't know if it's just me, but I haven't felt the time go that fast. I just, yeah, I feel like we've just been doing this for like 10 minutes. I don't know if it's just me. Anyways, thank you very much um, once again. I'll just take um, a few questions and then you can continue with um, the presentation, demonstration. Okay, so had a lot of questions from Michaela. So I'll read them out for you. She says the issue with ordering from China is shipping. It's too expensive and erodes profits. So what are the alternatives to shipping via air? And then she also wants to know what online platforms are there for us to sell our goods in Ghana? Okay. So you can address these ones, yeah. Right, um, I think I'll address the latter one first. Um, what online platforms there are in Ghana to sell your items on? So there is something called a sales funnel. Um, and this applies to every, every business, right? Every industry. Sales funnel basically is how you look for customers, how you get the customers, and how you convert them from just people who, want, who are interested in your business into actual customers to buy from you or take an action from you. Depending on what your sales funnel is like, you can even use platforms like Tonaton because maybe your, your funnel is designed such that people just see your product first, gain their interest, and then maybe contact you on Instagram or something. So, I mean, actually, now with Instagram and all the Instagram updates coming up, you can literally sell on Instagram, on your Instagram account. Uh, but I think the biggest one or the most popular one Actually, no, let me be, let me be biased. Um, very soon, the yeah. easiest and the biggest one that you can sell on will be mafala.com um, uh, But I think for now, I think you can use platforms like the, the classified platforms like Gigi, like um, Gigi was formerly OLX or um, Pronaton or Jumia. I, I, hmm, um, I, I'm not too sure about Jumia. And this is for personal reasons, because I mean, if you're, if you're running a business like this, again, because you're not um, you know, developing the product yourself, there's already that offset of profits that happens because 
you're not getting the price at the production cost, you know. And so there's that margin that you have already shaded up. And so coming to Jumia again, and the, you know they have they have percentages, they have tariffs, which goes up, up as high as like 25% of, of sales. If you're looking at something like that, I mean, yes, you're going to be guaranteed a certain order, order number, but then also, is this something you can shed off? Can you shed off 20% of your profits to, to Jumia, to a platform like Jumia and all of that? So um, that is for the selling in Ghana bits. But on the expensive shipping costs to Ghana, I think that question came in before I started talking about the fulfillment centers, right? I'd be, I'm sure mm. that if, that question came in before I started talking about fulfillment centers. Yeah. That is the 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 only reason you should use fulfillment centers. I mean, that's well, not the only reason, but like that's one of the biggest reasons you should use fulfillment centers because you can even do a very simple search. If you compare shipping to, to the US and then shipping to Ghana from China, you realize that you're best off shipping to the US than shipping to Ghana. And again, even if shipping to shipping from China to Ghana alone is not um, it's not that expensive. Shipping from Ghana to somebody in the US or shipping from Ghana to somebody in Germany, shipping from Ghana to somebody in Canada, it's very, very expensive. Very, very expensive. So, um, sorry, I forgot the name, but I think Michaela. your best option, <laughs> Michaela, your best option now would be to use fulfillment centers, like like I explained earlier. Um, Shipbob is my, my um, personal favorite. I have been using Shipbob since 2016 for all, all my platforms. Um, and I can guarantee you ShipBob will help you. Um, yeah, I think that, that would be the answer for that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't know. Okay, before I continue, I would like to say that we are streaming live on YouTube. So um, if you miss anything during the Zoom session, you can visit the, our YouTube channel, Invest in GH, and then find the video there and then rewatch please do all to like, comment, and then subscribe to our channel for all our videos. We have other presentations there as well that you can watch. They all talk about investments. So kindly visit our YouTube channel and then watch our videos. Okay. Um, I was saying that I don't know if I should take the questions that would require demonstrations first, or I should just mix it up. I don't know how you would want it to be. Um, any, anyway, I mean, if you pass demonstration, I would, I would just switch and demonstrate it. So you can just go, okay. don't worry. So um, Ajwa Ajman is asking if you can explain the order process again, how to place the order. Um, okay. So let me go through. Uh, okay, let me share my screen and demonstrate that. Okay. Hi, Adra. So this, um, the order process basically is how a customer moves from, I mean, with any e-commerce business, the final action you want the customer to take is place an order, right? That is like the, that is like the ultimate of, of conversions. You want the person to place an order. That's the ultimate conversion. Now, the process to the person, um, Creating that order or you know ordering your product from your website is first of all the trust you need to gain in your business, which is why I was talking about using already established platforms like Amazon. That way they don't have to trust your business, they just have to trust Amazon, which you know it's a given. They already trust Amazon. You get it. However, if you're looking to create your own brand long term. Ideally, you should get your own platform that people can order from you. Yes, at that stage, the trust is a bit some way. But once you get that mm -hmm. person to trust in you, everybody else that that person knows will trust in you. you know? And so imagine if I was giving the example of when you see um, a Facebook ad. Yes, you have seen it, it's enticing and all of that, but you don't immediately click to try buy something from them, right? Because again, there's all these things running through your mind. Even if you click, and you're very interested, you go to the website, you still want to buy Krana. There's still, you know, some doubt in your head. And so you find, you find, um, okay, maybe next time I'll share like detailed, detailed analytics or on at least my platforms. You, you, you realize what customers do. You have somebody that spent like 
15 minutes on your website. All they are doing is checking your products, copying the name, going to Google the product, get response, read that response they get from Google, and then come back to your, your, your product. Now, at least they are convinced with the product. Now, they come to buy the product. They see the product again. They check the price. Okay, is this the actual price? They copy the price, copy the product again, go and Google it for price, compare the prices, and before they buy it. So, like, there's a whole, there's a chain of events that happens before a customer places an order. You know, there is the pressing. Some people even get the item. They have done the research. They like it and all of that. They add it to cart, and just before they're about to check out, some way somehow they are distracted and they just leave it. You know, it said that um, the average person's attention time on an e-commerce platform is between six to fourteen seconds. In between six to fourteen seconds, you no, know, anything can distract that person and they will leave your website. Yes, they will leave the item in your cart in their cart on your website, but then they will leave their website. And so, if you don't have um, a really robust system to convert. I, for one, have I have systems that if somebody leaves an item in their cart, I know I know what they left in their cart. I know how long they stayed on the website for all of that. So I'm able to send them, for instance, send them an email with maybe a discount coupon to say that, oh, hey, by the way, you left something in your cart and so come back to buy. And once you do, I mean, it's, it's an automated process, but like once that happens and a person gets that email, they feel sort of like a personal connection with the brand or with the company and you feel like, okay, actually, it's as if somebody, like they get to feel like there's a human factor to the whole process, which then even, you know, gives them a, a more reason to trust the brand and come back and finish the order. And so the, the order process is basically how a person comes to the website, trusts the product, agrees to the pricing model, and finally clicks to buy an, to, 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 you know, make a purchase on your website. And, People think that, oh, for the company, the ultimate is to get an order. For, to make business sense, yes, but for the company, the problem starts after somebody had paid you money. Because mind you, if the person hadn't paid you money, they hadn't ordered anything on your website, yeah, they are just interested, right? And so they really don't have anything on you. You don't have anything on them. But once they pay you money, once they do that conversion, they go through that conversion and they pay you money, it will shock you that like the next five minutes after they pay you money, they're going to send you an email. Please, when should I expect my order? You know, you might go and respond, that, oh, I expect it in two weeks. By the next week, they'll come up to be sure that you said two weeks. Please, did you say two weeks? Okay, I'm just, you know, like after the person had said, had, had um, placed the order, that is when you have, like that's, that's where you can, you can, make a business case. Like that's where your business stands. That is where you can, you can, you know, actually run a business because placing the order is really, really simple. Honestly, it's very, very simple. There are platforms that have made that very, very easy. Platforms like, like Shopify. So this is Shopify. I'm sure almost everybody in this call has heard about Shopify. Um, Shopify basically is um, sort of like a software as a service. It's a SaaS product that helps you create an e-commerce um, website where customers can order items and everything all in one place. You know, you know who is buying what, where the person came from, what they bought, all of those things, all from one place. Shopify allows you to do that. And you can set up Shopify and start selling in like the next one hour, you know. So setting up the platform to sell is not a problem. The problem is after you have received the order. That is where the problem is, which is where the order process is. And so what model are you running? One of it is, um, like I explained, for this purpose, we are doing um, private labeling. And so everything I said about the order process is specifically tailored to private labeling. However, there are different, different e-commerce uh, models that you can run. There is the drop shipping model. Drop shipping basically is, so for instance, for private labeling, we went to AliExpress um, to get a supplier. Why? Because AliExpress, the suppliers they sell in bulk, and that's what we want. Sorry, Alibaba, the suppliers they sell in bulk, and that's what we want, right? But for drop, for drop shipping, people will be buying from you one one, and so you want to go to AliExpress, you know. And the drop shipping model basically is finding a company. So in this case, like the company we found, just for an example, like the manufacturer we found, right? For this product. Yeah. For private labeling. We are buying the product from them under our own brand and then going to put it in the fulfillment center to fulfill from there, right? But for drop shipping, we don't buy the product. We don't pay upfront. It's just taking the product with the same branding and everything 
creating a website and selling the product. If somebody buys the product from your website, the order automatically goes to, comes to this manufacturer. So maybe the manufacturer is selling it for one dollar, you will be selling it for twenty dollars on your website. The person buys it from your on, from your website at twenty dollars. The order comes to the manufacturer. The manufacturer only charges you the the, the um, one dollar or two dollars they are selling the items for. The manufacturer will handle the shipping and everything, and then ship it to the customer for you. And so you don't you are just like a middleman. Um, you know, in the entire process. For a very long time, that was the model I was running. But then, you know, you expect that there are lots of delays with buying things from China and how long it takes to even ship to the customer. So you have somebody who has bought something from you from like, for like three weeks and they're still waiting for the item. And, you know, customers would have questions. That's, again, like I said, after they have paid you money, you will literally be replying emails every single hour, you know? And so, um, that is the whole order process. It's it's where your business stands. That is that is basically what makes or break your business. And so you don't pay attention to what model you're running. Again, for this webinar sake, it's just private labeling, and then where you would sell. So even with private labeling, as I explained, even with private labeling model, there is still options to where you can sell at. You know, one of it that I, I mentioned was the the Etsy platform, where they have about, I think right now they have about seven million people selling. Uh, on Etsy, and then there's Amazon that has about 16 million people um, selling on Amazon. So, um, Adwa, I think I, I hope that this explains further the order process. Um, yeah. Yeah. Henry. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, um, Nanayo. This next question is from Healthy Ghana. <laughs> okay, so Healthy Ghana is asking, um, please talk to us about setting up a business on Amazon. Take us through the process of setting up on Amazon. Okay, um, right. The, the reason I didn't talk about setting up a business, um, I mean, going through the Amazon process is because it might not apply to everybody because yeah. to enjoy the full benefits of the uh, fulfilled by Amazon um, platform, you would, you would have to have had a registered US business, which is why I intentionally mentioned the process of getting a, a registered US business so that if you want to sell on Amazon, it will be easier. You can sell on Amazon from Ghana, um, but that will limit you a lot to even, you know, the kind of items you can sell, um, how fast you can sell, and even about Amazon will offset the shipping, you know, process to you or they'll take it up. All depends on um, the fact that you're selling from Ghana. So ideally, the best way to, to sell on Amazon, first thing you'd want to do is to get a US registered business from the, the um, Delaware Inc. page that I, I showed. I spoke about here. Go through the process, um, get a registered US business. Once you have a registered US business, you will need, you, I mean, you can use this document to then create a US bank account because Amazon only pays through PayPal. I mean, they, they pay out through PayPal or through checking accounts from, from um, a registered US business, right? And specifically, if you would want to get your money hitting your accounts and you know paying off your taxes. Okay, actually, another thing, mind you, once you register your business as I mean you register US business, you are then going to be charged US business operation taxes and all of that. But I mean, don't let that scare you because it's you know it's it's standard, you can add those extra charges to the prices and everybody will understand. Like whoever is buying from you, from the US will understand that you add those taxes and everything. And so the first step of selling on Amazon will be to, to um, create a Delaware Inc. page, sorry, company, which in this case, creating a, a US-based company, but then you're in Ghana, you don't have to be in the US to create that. And the second, of all, the second thing will be um, creating an account on Amazon. So if you try to create an account on Amazon FBA, right? They advise you that you get a local representative to help you. What this does is Amazon doesn't like to deal with, imagine there are 16 million people selling on Amazon. Imagine if Amazon was dealing with every, uh, every person, like all the 16 million people one by one. You know, they would need like to hire like 16 million people again to be able to do all of that. So what they have done is they have, um, they get they sign people up as partners, as Amazon partners, you know, regional partners or local partners, so that 
whenever you want to create an account and start selling on Amazon, yes, they will allow you to go through the process of creating the account. But then when it comes to doing the business, they advise you to um, go with an Amazon, you know, partner. And I am in the process of being an Amazon partner. I'm actually officially an Amazon partner, but the region I chose initially is not, unfortunately, it's not Ghana. Um, it was the US. I'm now adding Ghana to it. I hopefully would be um, verified to be an Amazon partner by January. Um, once I get that, I can easily set you up um, from, from, from here in Ghana. But if you want to do it yourself, like I said, then you need to get a registered business in the US and then go to FB, the Amazon FBA page and go, go and um, um, get an account from there. And the Amazon FBA page setup is pretty straightforward. Um, okay, if I have to take us through it, it will take some time because you need verification things and all of that. But basically, this is what happens. You get to the Amazon FBA page, you know, show interest that you want to sell. You go to sign up. Or ideally, you'd want to check, you know, read through all the, the policies and everything, you know, what it will cost you to, to, to sell on Amazon, all the price difference, what cards they add, all of those things, the sales margins. You actually have a calculator that will help you um, calculate and understand what your sales will be, you know, every month. Um, there are case studies you can learn from all of it. I advise that you learn, like, go through all the process. So this is why they would want to deal with a partner rather than dealing with individuals. So because they understand that or they think they would believe that a partner understands all these things and would explain it to the, to, to the local businesses easier. And so, um, yeah, you can go ahead and do it by yourself. First get an account here, um, you know, come and sign up. If you don't have a bank account, you can create a Stripe account. So there is a company called Stripe. Stripe is a payment processing company. I think they are the biggest in the world. Um, they recently acquired Paystack. I don't know if any of you know Paystack is, in, is a Nigerian um, payment processing company. So Stripe is like the biggest, like I said, you know, Amazon, Slack, everybody is using Stripe. So what you, if you don't want, have, want, don't want to deal with having a bank account in the US that you, know, you always have to reconcile your account and everything, you can create a Stripe account. Stripe gives you sort of like a virtual bank account that Amazon will, pay, will be paying you straight or directly into it. And then you can pay out from Stripe to maybe your PayPal or maybe your Payoneer account or even di transfer it directly to your Ghana um, account. So um, these are like the three key things you need. First of all, register a business in the US. Second of all, get the Stripe account and then register an Amazon FBA account. But I mean, if you're not looking to do this immediately, somewhere from January, then I can help you. Okay. Thank you very much, Nanael. Um, we've done an hour and eight minutes. Wow. Anyways, still feels like Already? it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, I have a question here. Um, a couple of people are asking if you, if you provide one, either a training session for people who want to venture into e-commerce or mentorship or um, yeah, basically training sessions, mentorship, one-on-one -on -one training sessions, yeah. Um, yes, I do. But like I explained when I was um, explaining the, the Amazon partner uh, conversation. So I do, but unfortunately, and I'm sorry, I'm not racist or anything, but um, unfortunately, I don't do, I didn't used to do, um, for locals, I didn't used to do for people in Ghana, um, but because of my my affiliation with, affiliation with um, Shopify and Amazon and the rest, I they by themselves even give you a lot of people who are ready to learn and people who would want you to do training for them. So yes, I do those trainings, but I have never had to do it for locals. But um, somewhere around June or May, I think. I thought of it to start doing this training locally. And so I started a YouTube channel. I'm sure you shared it somewhere after. Um, yeah. I started a YouTube channel that I was going to talk about all of these things. Um, but then again, life happened and I haven't been consistent with it. But from, from January, um, once I add Ghana to my, my um, Amazon partnerships, then I can actually start officially doing um, you know, e-commerce trainings, but yeah. So between now and, and January, if you have any questions, you can just shoot me on Instagram. 
that's what almost everybody does actually. Um, shoot me a message on Instagram um, with the help that you need or you know what you need help with, and I can immediately refer you to to um, what you should do. And I think let me just add this. Um, so the truth is that doing any kind of business online is not a given. Actually, no, that's not okay. It's a given. Yes, it's a you, you can do it, right? But there is no simple way of doing it. You know, I can learn it. I mean, I have learned it over seven years, and so it's easier for me to do it. Which is how I'm able to share all of these experiences and explain all of these things to you because I have had to learn it, right? But like I said, every e-commerce business, the structure they run is different. Yes, there is a model they run. But the structure they run under that model is different. And so you can only be taught the basics. You need to actually be interested in, you know, practically trying it out before you can do anything. I have a lot of people, especially on my Instagram, they just come and say that, oh, I'm really interested in this, um, but I, I don't have time, but I have 20,000 cities. Can you do it for me? I mean, if... You know, if you're coming to send me a message like that, obviously, you know, I can't help you. You know, I can only refer you to what you should do and all of that. Um, there's a learning curve to e-commerce and it's best that you learn it yourself because once you learn the model or once you learn the process and you're able to figure it out, you can do so many other things under the same e-commerce um, structure. You know, for instance, myself, like I explained, I'm running two dropshipping stores. I'm running one private lending store I'm running one um, print-on-demand store. And then I officially have makola.com.gh in Ghana that is like the biggest that I'm still running. And, you know, and it's easier for me to do this because it's the same ecosystem. It's the same e-commerce and everything is the same. You know, the system is the same, right? And so you need to learn it. And so I'm just saying this to discourage the people who will be coming to send me messages to say that, oh, hey, uh, I, I don't have time, but... I have 10,000, can we partner? I have, you know, please, um, let's try to do it yourself. It will, that way, actually, you make more money than having somebody do it for you because you, you think that, oh, you're just bringing the money and then they will help you do it, you know? So yeah, if, if the training is coming, um, but if you have any, any quick question, you can just send it to me on Instagram, my Instagram DM. My Instagram is ny NY as in Nanayao underscore Berima. My Berima is B E R I M A. Um, yeah, so just, just that's for now. I think you should just shoot me any question on Instagram. But from 7th of January, um, I'm planning the training. So yeah, I'll be open to it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think Nanayao's contacts will be made available to all the participants who have registered and those of you who are in our WhatsApp groups, because that's the only way we can contact you. So if you want to get in touch with Nanayao, then kindly register on the website, www.investinggh.info, so that after the webinar, when we send out the details of the webinar, you can receive them. You can also join our WhatsApp group. The group link has been made available in the chat section here. For those of you on YouTube, we will send the link to you on YouTube so that you can just tap and then join the Investing GH group. Please join because aside this, we also send out very important info that will be relevant to you. So kindly join the WhatsApp groups. Okay, thank you very much, Nanayao. Um, let's proceed. Charles Boatin wants to know if he can have a flow chat simplifying the whole process um, and the various parties and websites involved? Um, sure. I don't know when I can get that to you, but yes, that's okay. something I can do. Um, yeah, I All can right. do that for you. So whenever it's ready, we will just send it out to sure. our registered yeah. members. Um, Na is asking that what happens when the products you are selling doesn't make enough sales? You know, you are not able to sell the products. What happens then? Um, <laughs> I think so. I mean, simple put, that is that basically is bad business. Um, 
And this is the reason why you would want to test a product first, or you'd want to you know, venture into an industry that you're familiar with. Remember, I was explaining that, that you'd want to you know, get into an industry that you're familiar with. So at least, if not anything at all, you know how to market a product like that, or you have, um, you know, you have a group or you, you know, you, you have a way, excuse me, you have a way to, to sell a product like that. You might, I mean, for instance, if let's say you're a makeup artist in Ghana, right? You're a very big makeup artist in Ghana. People know you for makeup. If that is the situation and you st you're starting a makeup brand, obviously, you know that, you know, at least people will trust you or will, people will trust the product that you're selling under your own brand. You get it. And so if, you're looking to sell, I think, okay, let me first, let me start from, from this point. If you're selling it under your own brand, then that is, that is normal. You need to understand that that is very normal. It might not sell immediately because you first need to sell the brand before you sell the product under the brand to people. And so if you do a bad job selling the brand, then you don't expect people to trust the product because even the brand self, they don't really they trust the brand like that. You know, imagine if you go to a website that they are selling, you know, yes, they're selling makeup things, but then you don't, you can't even trust the website because there are so many things happening that, do you get what I mean? Like every, you need to pay attention to every step of the customer journey, you know, because like I explained, customers are very, very, um, what's the right word? There's a lot of thinking that goes into deciding to buy from you. You know, and so you could have them at every point and just lose them at one little point and they will, they will be away. You know, so it's not like then, then it's not like your product is not good. Your product is very, very good. But maybe it is the brand that you're building around the product that people are not interested in or you're not doing it well. And so people can't trust the brand to then buy from you. You know, there are different metrics that, that can help you decide what the problem is. Um, if, if you're using a platform, like Shopify and you have a Facebook pixel, for instance, um, linked to it. It gives you so many other information on who visited the website, what, the, what action the person took on the website. So you can learn from all of that data. Um, so I'm, I'm a data scientist too, so I'm very, very data biased. You can, you, like data is everything. You know, if, if, you're, if you get data, it could, if maybe it could even be that people, it's not like people are not interested in the product. People like the product. People like what the product stands for. Maybe it is the size of the product that people are not, you know, people don't like, or maybe it's the color of the product that people don't like. And these are like very, very little things that you might think, oh, it doesn't matter, but it really, really matters when it comes to when it comes to user experience and people trusting your brand, people trusting in your product. And so um, now don't lose if 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 you realize that your products are not selling, um, maybe it's time to change something. It doesn't mean you should just throw the product away all, all together and start over again. Maybe you just need to change something. Maybe it's your website, or maybe you know, you're you not building a brand well. You're trying to do everything by yourself. Maybe you're trying to do your social media by yourself, but it's something you don't know. You don't know how to do it, but you're trying to do it yourself. You're trying to you know, do your marketing yourself. Maybe, do you get me? It could be something very, very little that you don't have to immediately just, you know, um, stop selling that product. So maybe just learn from data, I'll say, just learn from, from, you know, how customers use your website and what customers are doing on your website, all of those things. Um, yeah, it doesn't always mean that your product is not good. No, actually 90% of the time, it is something about the brand and not the product. You know, an example is Instagram. Every time Instagram does an update, we're all like, ah, what is this? You know, why are they changing it? All of that. Imagine when they did a rebrand, for instance, we're all like, why are they rebranding? What is this rainbow colors and everything? But now it's the map. Like we're all used to it and we trust it. And we're so, you know, now they are doing all these updates with the shop and everything. People are, are complaining, give it like one month. Everybody will get used to it, you know, because they have built their brand to a certain um, level. So I'd say maybe it's not the product. It's a brand you should pay attention to. Um, so yeah, that, that would be my answer for that. Okay, thank you for your response. Um, Joseph is asking, can you please give a small description of your Makola business model and how people can sell on it? Okay. Um, so 
Mapola is a hybrid of the marketplace and um, a private label business, I'd say. Um, a marketplace in the sense that we want people to be able to sell on there, right? But yeah. like I explained earlier, people are more interested in your brand than in the product you're selling because your, I mean, the product basically represents the brand. And so if you can't sell the brand to me, you can't sell the product to me, right? And one of the things you find on a typical marketplace is that after some time, if there is no proper regulation to it, after some time, it just gets clustered, it gets congested. People are just posting anything. People are just you know, putting anything on there for sale. And then the credibility and the trust in the brand goes down. You know, A typical example of that is Tonaton. When Tonaton came in, it was a big deal. Everybody was selling. And so people start, started you know, duping people on Tonaton you know, defrauding people on Tonaton and all of that. And now the whole Tonaton credibility is, is, is being tarnished, right? And so what we are doing with Mapala is that we, we are helping you um, sell easily to customers without you having to figure out or deal with all of that situation of, you know, you know getting the customer to trust you. Um, is the customer mm -hmm. really going to get their items when you say they're going to get it and all of that you know so one of the things that we preach is same day package delivery at this as a stance now we're only selling um groceries because we we believe groceries are like you know the everyday items that people need almost every time and so if anybody can trust you with their food they can trust you with anything else you know and so um, that's that's why we're starting with groceries and, and can so you far, take us to your website so that we can see because all the other websites you've shown us <laughs> so, um, um, you know just like to see makola try um okay give me a second i am currently logged in to the back end so i have to stop the share before i open it log out and then i'll share again so give me a second um, oh okay you can continue with your um, yeah, so like I was saying, Makola is, is we're, high, we're basically, we're more for the business, for, for businesses, you know, and manufacturers than we are for customers directly. I don't know if I said that right, but we are more focused on businesses being able to sell well and, you know, more than customers just being able to buy. Because if you think about it, these businesses and manufacturers are already established. And so if customers want to buy, they can just walk into a shop and buy, right? But then COVID has brought us a situation that people are a bit reluctant to going out to buy things, for instance. And uh, manufacturers are also, because people are not going out to buy things, distributors are not, you know, getting more stock from the manufacturers as they usually get it. And so manufacturers are also getting a backlog. And so how does manufacturers get their items already to customers? It's a, it's a whole chain um, of processes. But what we, basically what Makala is doing is trying to bridge the manufacturer and the customers directly to, so that we can guarantee the customer a faster delivery, um, a much more secure shopping experience. And we, we focus specifically on user experience because that is, is, is one of the things that will break or make your website. And I'm sure, I mean, when you were, when you were um, introducing me, you made mention of my experience with, with user experience. I actually had to study user experience um, from, from Georgia Tech. And so if you see Makola, if it's ju just when you see the Makola website, you understand um, what we mean by a, a better user experience and having the customer trust the brand, you know, rather than I'm forced to do a certain comparison, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me, let me, okay. I'll, I'll do a very simple um, comparison here. Let me see. And please, no hard feelings. I'm just, I mean, when I do the comparison, no hard feelings. I'm just trying to let us understand, um, to let us understand something. And what I meant by, by you know, getting, getting a, customers to trust your brand as compared to the product you're selling, you know. Um, and the brand building process is something that I think a lot of businesses or a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of businesses in Ghana don't pay attention to because 
they just think about the product. They are all interested in the product because they feel like, oh, this is like a really good product that customers would like, customers would want to buy, you know? And so they just focus on the product development, product development, product development. And then finally, they have a very, very good product that yes, customer wants, but because their brand is not necessarily, you know, people can't really trust their brand. Maybe because of something very, very little, maybe because of packaging or because of um, the order process, maybe it's too long or it's, it's just, I mean, these are like really, really basic things that you would not necessarily, you know, think about, but then if you don't pay attention to it, it is going to ruin your brand. And so, okay, I am almost ready. Um, okay, yes. So let me, let me just show. Okay. Right. So once now I'm about to show the Makola platform and then do the simple comparison I was talking about, um, you know, when it comes to um, brand building and everything. The fact that people pay attention to the brand they're buying from rather than you know the company they're buying from. I don't know if that actually I think that is the that is the best way to put it. People pay attention to the company they're buying from rather than the product they're selling, right? Imagine if you had another ideal milk or you saw another ideal milk, but it's not from Nestle. Would you buy it? No, you buy. You want to buy Nestle idea. Why? Because you trust Nestle. You get it. So that's 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 the the um, the, the example of that. Okay. Um, I, I think kind. we should. Mm -hmm. You should go. Okay, let's go with another question. Let me finish this setup. Okay, once well, you set up, all right. Um, yes. yeah. Please do all to visit our YouTube channel after the webinar, if you haven't, and click the subscribe button. Watch our videos, like, and comment on our videos to promote us as well. Okay, so a question from Jeffrey. Jeffrey is asking, what other places can we order goods from apart from Alibaba? Okay. Um, so that's a very good point. I, I, there's a, okay, I don't want to say there's a, okay, there's a hack to it. There, there are so many other places to get um, products from. But unfortunately, the truth is that all those other companies are owned by the Alibaba group. And so you are, you are just, you're still under the same umbrella, you know, all those other um, companies are still under the Alibaba group. You can look for uh, Made in China. So there's there's a company, a website called Made in China. Um, there is also um, Bank Goods, Bank Goods, B-A-G, B-A-N-G, G-O-O-D-S. There's also Bank Goods um, that, are also from, that is also from China. Um, I think you don't necessarily have to get the items from China. Let me get that clear. You don't necessarily have to get your, your product from China. If you you have identified a, a manufacturer, or in fact, the big companies, the big big companies that do private labeling, what they do is they look at a company that is already established, and you can do this even with a Ghanaian company. And I'm I'm saying this from experience because we are doing something like that, you know, with Makola, where we go to manufacturers who are producing like you know everyday items, and then we say that oh hey. You're selling, you're a manufacturer. That is what you are known for. Nobody can ever take that away from you. Um, however, we would want you to manufacture the products for us, but we want to sell at the, our brand. And almost immediately, they agree to it because it's an industry standard, you know? And so it doesn't necessarily have to come from China. You can actually even start with manufacturers in Ghana if, if whatever you're trying to do is something that, um, you know, whatever you're trying to do is something that you, you want to sell in Ghana. It is like an everyday product you want to sell in Ghana. An example of this is, I think somewhere last, actually no, early this year, 
there was a, a very popular um, toiletry rule that started coming up, called Happy or something. There was a yellow branding with a very black smiley face on it. And it really caught attention, you know, but I don't know what their model is, but I would want to believe it was private labeling. You know, we went to a manufacturer in Ghana, which producing toilet rolls and just said that, hey, we want you to produce for us, but we will put our branding on it. The price doesn't change because they give you factory price, which is what the manufacturers do with all the distributors, you know. And so um, you don't necessarily have to get, you know, your product from a manufacturer from, from China, sorry. You can go with any manufacturer. That is, if you know of any company selling something that you would want to, you or you'd also want to sell, you know, you can just go to um, the company, but you have to be professional about it. You know, you can't just send them a WhatsApp message or just send them an Instagram DM expecting that they reply to you. You have to be professional about it. Send a proper email. If if you can send it from your company email address, you know, it just adds extra um, level of trust to, to the whole process. So yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Are you are you ready to share your screen now? Or we should one second. Okay. Let's let's get one more question now. Okay, now wants to know what is the downside to e-commerce business? What is the downside to e-commerce business? Um, downside, I think it depends with the kind of model you're running. Because if you're running a high cost model, which in this case, private labeling is one of the high, I mean, private labeling is a, is a high cost model in the sense that you pay money first to get the product first, and then before you sell to make your money back, you know? And so in, in, in a model like that, you know, you, you, you'd expect that if you don't sell, just like Nah herself asked again, if you don't sell, then you're making a loss. Um, but if you're, if you're doing, if you're running a model like private labeling, sorry, uh, print on demand or drop shipping, those are, you know, models that don't cost you much to start. Because for, for dropshipping, for instance, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to um, buy the product. It's just a matter of taking the product details and the pictures and then putting it on your website to sell. And once somebody orders from the website, so it's only when somebody orders for a product that you go and pay the manufacturer for it. You know, And the same thing with print on demand. Print on demand basically is for branded um, um, items, apparels, so like branded bags, or you want to start your own branded phone case company, or you want to start your own t-shirt, you know, branded t-shirt company, or you want to start your own um, branded anything, right? So that's print on demand. And it's the same model as, as dropshipping. You only pay for the product when somebody orders on, on your website, which is why the name is called print on demand. So it's only printed when somebody demands it, i.e. when somebody buys it on your website. And that is when you only pay for it. So for the, for the high cost uh, models, I'd say that, I mean, you're going into it as a business. And as a business, yes, there's, there's a downside of, of making a loss. And there's also, um, um, you know, the possibility of, me, of you making, making a profit. There's a, actually a higher possibility of you making more profit than any other model with the print on demand model that we're talking about today. You know, print on demand model is where you can make, you can actually make more money for a very, very long time. I know my very first print on demand um, private labeling store, um, I think my first six months, I made about $8,000 in the first six months. And it was a very, very fresh product, like a very, very fresh uh, company that people didn't trust again. People were finding it difficult to trust, but then even with that, I made um, about eight thousand. The second, the second um, uh, half of the year, I had a partner. I had a Canadian partner, and so the, a lot of the marketing started in Canada. And so you, you know, we we got volumes. We we made. Okay, I can't disclose that, but we made way, way, way more than eight thousand um, dollars in the next in the second half of the year. And so I think it depends on the business you want to run. Again, you need to figure out from the get go that. Are you doing e-commerce as a passive income thing? You know, are you just trying to, you know, while away time and try to make some money whilst you're still in your, in your job? Or you're looking to run e-commerce as a business, as an actual company that you're going to, you know, spend as a startup, if you'd like. Um, yeah, I think the downside is just not learning enough 
and making a lot of a lot of expensive mistakes that would then cost you um, a lot of money. But like every e-commerce business, everybody who has done e-commerce will tell you that the biggest downside downside of e-commerce is inventory. If you're having to keep inventory, that is very expensive. <laughs> that is very very expensive. It, it could cost you your business, you know, because you it basically is like buying something to sell when you're not sure that people will actually buy it. You know, you just trust a certain system or you just trust a certain model that oh people like this they'll buy it. And so let me just you know go and sell these things. Let me buy a lot of these things and go and sell it. So yeah, I think the downside is having to keep inventory. Um, but that being said, you know, there's also when you start making the money, you make more money that way than any any other way. So yeah, I'll say that is the, the the only little downside to e-commerce. But hey, like I, I keep saying, you need to learn. Like there's a lot to learn um, from e-commerce. And so you'd want to do your test. You'd want to try out all the models. You'd want to learn from somebody who has done it. In this case, you know, trying to learn from, from somebody like me um, who has already done it. And, and just learn, you know, when the person, like what the person tells you, just learn. I think I think that's all. Like that's that's what I say. Okay. That. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sharing my screen for those who have not seen. Um, Macola dot com. This is the Macola website. Yes. So yeah, this is how it looks like if you want to buy in it. I just like the presentation. That's why I wanted you to share it so that everyone will right. see how it looks like. Right. Yeah, we're making some updates to, to the, the front page, which is why I wanted to um, oh, okay. publish that before. But yeah, it's fine, you can share it. So this is, it's just like a grocery shop, like um, ShopRite or any other. Can you tell us more about it? Um, How yes. people can use it. So, yeah. So, okay, go to the home page. Let me start from there. Okay. Right. So, um, if if you learn anything about e-commerce, um, you will quickly learn that user experience is like everything. And user experience basically is the process that a customer goes through or the things that a customer can do, the actions a customer can take on your platform, be it a mobile app, a website, anything. That is where your, your business success lies, especially if you're running your business on a website or an app. And so if you look up, if you if you look at most, I mean, or from data, it has been it has been thought that the easiest you get the things that customers are looking for to them the faster they take an action on the website, you know? So imagine, um, so I wanted to do um, a comparison on, okay, let, let me, Prince, let me share my screen order. Yeah, sure. So I can compare. All right. Um, one second. Whilst you're at it, um, do you have to register an online business in Ghana? Well, if you're doing business of any sort, you need to register, you know, you need to have a registered entity under that business name. And so for Makola, for instance, we are registered as Makola Digital Commerce Limited. Um, and that's oh, where we do. Okay. Yes. Um, what about regulation? Is there any regulator for the industry, e-commerce industry? Not yet, but I think, um, Every other, every other, um, uh, what would I say, country regulation or country policies or business policies from the Internal Revenue Service, everything still applies. You can't get away with any of those. Um, you still have to have to pay taxes. Um, but again, depending on what model you're running, you know your tax, your tax um, filing and process is different depending on whichever model you're running. Because, for instance, if you're buying from manufacturers um, to come and resell, then you're going to pay tax tax per, per item sold, you know. 
But then if you're getting people to sell by themselves, just on your platform, then you're only going to pay taxes on the service fee. I don't know if you know what I mean. So yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yes. What about um, fulfillment centers? Are there any fulfillment centers in Ghana? No, so we are the first fulfillment center in Ghana, actually. I have a fulfillment center um, business in Ghana called Deliver. So it's D-I-L-I-V-A. Um, and it's a, it's a fulfillment model um, that, so basically Deliver does all the fulfillment of Makola. So that's, that's the thing. Okay. It's, it's two different companies, but then it does everything. So for instance, for, for suppliers or for manufacturers that would want to sell on Makola, um, because we promise a same day delivery, the only way we can do same day delivery is if we have stock of some of the product, you know, because if we're going to have to go and take the product from the manufacturer before we deliver to the customer, obviously, realistically, the same day delivery is, is not realistic. The only way we can do same day delivery is if we keep stock of some of the products and if you, the moment you have to keep stock of a certain product, then you are running a fulfillment model. And so in this case, we had to bring in um, deliver as, as our fulfillment um, 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 partner. But deliver is also for us. So the mother company of Makola is, is, is called Crea. So it's Crea Studios. Crea is, um, is French for create. So it's spelled C-R-E-E-R. So Crea is, is French for, for Create. And we have so many other brands under Crea. Um, so Crea is myself. I, I am the founder and owner of Crea. Um, we have so many brands under, under Crea. We have um, food.com.gh under Crea. We have mafala.com.gh under Crea. We have shop.com.gh under Crea. We have um, deals.com.gh under Crea. Um, we have company that's from the GH and I mean, all of these companies are now coming up. We'll be launching very soon, but Makala is the very first one that has been launched. And so, yeah, um, Makala is the very first one. Um, delivery centers is only in Ghana, uh, but we have it. We've had a lot of people request that we, we um, open it up, opening the delivery, the fulfillment, sorry, the fulfillment bit up to, you know, so that everybody can, can come and buy from them, uh, sorry, everybody can come in and you know, have a performance that comes with us, but we would want to give priority to you know, our partners of Makola. And so for, it, for anybody that comes to us to want to come and you know, sign up with us as a performance center, we always advise them to first try to sell on Makola first, because that way we can guarantee you customers from the platform and then we deliver your items to the customers for you. So okay. um, yeah. Yeah. We would have to wrap up. We've done one hour forty minutes. So wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let me let me switch to my account and show you. Okay. What I meant um, by. Okay. So. Um. Na right. Na asked about the. Um. Not selling, and what you do. So let me just give you a typical example now of the reason why the reason why um, focusing on the brand is more important than the product you're selling. I'm sure all of us know Zuba Shop, right? I want to believe everybody on this call has heard about Zuba Shop at least because they were one of the first, one of the very first companies that, um, sorry, one of the very first e-commerce companies that started in Ghana. So I, I, I worked with, with Ring Gear Ghana. Um, Ring Gear Ghana is the mother company of Pulse, Pulse Ghana. Um, so I worked with Ring Gear Ghana. I then was a part of the very small team of two people that started Pulse TV. Um, and then the, I managed Pulse TV to 2016. Um, as part of the Ring Gear company, we had a brand called tissot.com.gh. I'm sure a lot of people know Tissot. Um, it was spelled T-I-S-U.com.gh. And at the time we had Tissot, Tissot was the biggest e-commerce platform in Ghana. And then Jumia came and then Zuba Shop came, right? So Zuba Shop and Jumia has always been on the same level. I mean, now Tissot is no more. 
but Zuba Shop and Jumi are still there and they have almost every time been on the same level. But now if you look at Zuba Shop and if you look at Tiso, and like I said, please, no hard feelings. I'm just, this is strictly technical. I'm just trying to give us an idea of, of um, you know, what people expect, you know, as, when it comes to brand and the product you're selling. Because the product you're selling there, honestly, people already know the product. Because if you're selling Vaultic, for instance, you can sell Vaultic on any e-commerce website. If people trust your brand, trust the website, you'll buy the Vaultic from you, you know. So this is a very simple, um, typical um, analysis that we're coming to do here. So these are like the top three, I would say top two e-commerce brands in Ghana. Now there is Makola. Makola is soon becoming one of the top brands in, in Ghana, top, top e-commerce brands in Ghana. Among these three, e these three platforms, I'm going to go through them, um, judging from user experience, only user experience. Um, this is Makola. You get all your categories here, just like every e-commerce platform. And then when you scroll down, just in case we think, this is how we think. And I can speak for Makola because I built Makola, so I understand what the user experience journey was. So just in case you missed all of this because you were so caught up with you know, checking the views and everything, you scroll down and you are reminded again that, oh, by the way, if you forgot where you're going, just click here to immediately redirect to any of the categories you want to buy. Because the truth is, unless you did an advertising to a specific product that somebody landed on your page, people know what they already want to buy even before they come to your website. You know? And so here we're giving the chance to the customer so that just to, to save them of the stress of searching for the product they want. If you're here to look for fruits and vegetables, you just click fruits and vegetables and then it loads the whole page for you. You see all the fruits and vegetables. If you want to filter through fruits or filter through vegetables, it's the same thing, you know. It's, it's basically the same everyday e-commerce process, right? But the experience is different. The way it looks, the way it's outlined and everything is different. So this is this is Makola. And this is Jumia, right? Same thing. They give you categories here. They show you the deals. You get a few of the product that are selling, recommended product. And then they come here and show you clustered deals that you can choose from. Click to easily redirect to whichever you want, right? And then there is Zuba Shop. This is Zuba Shop. Yes, they have the same things. I don't know what these are, but I want to believe these are show, these are deals. Um, you scroll down, there is still, it's, it's almost the same thing, right? But there is the presentation of the experience, you know, as compared to practicality of the experience. And so, the thing I'm, I mean, just the only thing I just wanted to point out here is that if you have these three platforms, look at this platform, this website, look at this website and look at this website. If you had to choose one to buy from, if you didn't know any of them, today is the first time you're seeing any of them. If you had to choose one, or if you had to choose two out of the three to buy from, which one would you choose? By default, and this is not me being biased, as Makola. In fact, let me take Makola out. Zuba Shop and Jumia. If I had to buy from any one of these, I'll choose Jumia because it looks more presentable. You know, it looks like a bit like an actual business. Zuba Shop to me looks like they are trying to start an e-commerce platform. Do you get what I mean? I just hope that I'm not offending the, the, the owners of Zuba Shop. I'm just trying to make a practical analysis here, you know. That is what it looks like. It looks like these, these guys just started. They're just trying to, you know, run an e-commerce business. But Jumia looks like, okay, they figured it out, you know. They know what they're about, you know. I'm, I believe it's the same thing that somebody would say about Makola and Zubashop. That Makola obviously looks very, very presentable. Um, so this this part is the is the what we are changing, what we are working on right now that I said is all. So that's why you're not seeing it. But obviously, if I look at this and I scroll. Okay, okay, very, very presentable, straightforward. It's not cut, it's not hitting the eye, you know, all of those things. And then Zuba Shop. And can I trust them? Do you get what I mean? So now this is what brand building does to, to your company. You know, people, right. the product can be the best in the world. But once I get to your platform and I can't trust the platform, obviously I can't trust the brand. 
you know. So that's that. That was just to explain that. Um, so yeah, I'm sure by now we've done like two hours. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. So yeah, I think we'll leave it here. All right. Thank you very much, um, uh, Are we done yeah. with all the questions? Because we don't want somebody feeling like we didn't answer their question. Um. Yeah, I should think so. Most of them have been answered already. So, <clears throat> okay. yeah, they'll just have to play back and then that, that should be. Okay, sure, sure. All right. So um, we have a few announcements before we go. And the first one is this webinar is an Investing GH webinar. Investing GH is the leading provider of financial news and education in Ghana our news magazines and more recently our webinars one of which you are present at have been delivered to thousands of people in ghana and in other countries in africa and asia to get access to resources from investing gh kindly visit our website www.investinggh.info at the website click register completes a very short form and then check your mailbox for a confirmation mail after registering once you don't have to register with us again you just have to periodically check your mailbox for correspondence from invest in gh you can also access our resources from youtube and also facebook but preferably youtube watch our webinars old webinars we've talked about stocks bonds um, real estate investments we are now doing e-business so you can just visit our website and then watch some of these webinars and educate yourself on investments. All resources to this webinar and our previous webinars are available on our website as well. And if you need them, you can just send us an email or just type whatever question you have for us on our website and we'll respond to you. You can also join one of our WhatsApp groups and then get daily news broadcast. You can get market updates. You can get access to financial magazines and reports. Just join us and then you get all our resources. All these things are free. You would only have to spend data, which we spend anyway. So just join us and then let's help us educate ourselves. This is um, the first part of our webinar. I think we'll be back again, Nanael. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. So um, maybe we'll be back soon um, with Nanael to take us through some of the processes that time wouldn't permit us to go through today so that we, we, we get in touch. For those of you who want Nanael's contacts, like I said earlier, it will be made available to all those who have registered and those who have joined our WhatsApp groups so that you can get in touch with Nanayao and ask him your questions. We will collaborate with Nanayao and see how best we can organize a training session for those of you who are interested. So that information will be um, communicated to you in our WhatsApp groups or via mail. All right, um, thank you very much Nanayao for honoring our invitation and taking us through how to start and run an e-commerce business today. We appreciate your efforts and your time that you spent with us. For us oh, at Invest in GH, yeah, we say thank you very much. And to our audience, we thank you for joining us today and for spending time with us. I know today is Sunday, another Sunday webinar. We, we hope that we'll be able to move back to Saturdays so that we can get more of um, you guys joining. But we thank you for spending your Sunday afternoon with us today. Um, Nanaya, before we go, do you have any last words for us? No, I think I think that'll be all. Uh, you, yeah. You've said everything. Um, yeah, my email address, if, you, if you're looking to send me an email, my email address is hello at nanayaoberima.com. Uh, my berima is B-E-R-I-M-A. Um, okay. Yeah, so if, if, if whatever you want to send, you want to send it via email, you should send it to that email. Hello at nanayaoberima.com. 
Um, but if you're looking to shoot me a simple message, like I said, just, just shoot it to my, my Instagram. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. Thank you very okay. much for so, having me. Thank you too for coming. Thank you to our audience. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye for now.